What's up everybody? My name is Brendan Orchard and I'm here with my friend Nick Mormon today. We're in his studio. Nick, how you doing, man? I'm doing alright. It's been a good Christmas. So awesome. Yeah. Um, so I just released a song called All the Things You Are. It's a popular jazz standard. It's been around for many years. It's uh, one of my favorite jazz songs and basically we wanted to make this modern. Um, and that was kind of my vision for it. Nick programmed keys and some cool synth sounds on it. Um, he produced it and mixed it right here in his studio. And today we're just going to kind of walk you through the process of how we created this song, how we got the sounds that are on it, and kind of give you an inside look at that. So we hope you enjoy. All right, here we go in amp zone. It's the first things first, we set up the amps. So I'm recording in stereo, because um, why not? It just sounds great. And I'm using these two amps. I love these amps. This is a vintage all-stock Fender Blues Deluxe from the 90s. And this is a boutique amp. It's, it's basically a JTM 45 style amp, and then I'm using the Sur 112 closed back cab. I love pairing these two amps together. Um, I have the Blues Deluxe really open, I have the mid scooped so it's just really clear and bell like and then this one kind of has the mids up and just a little bit more pointy, more trebly, just in your face so they blend really well together um, and I just love how they sound. I'm going to talk about how I capture that sound, uh, the mic setup I used going into the computer. Alright, so what I used was a close mid far technique, which is basically exactly what it sounds like. I have a really close mic, I have a mic that's a little bit further back, getting a little more of the nuance, and then I have a far a room mic that's just getting a little bit of room tone to bring in, make it feel a little more uh, real. Um, and then obviously we've got the stereo set up. Um, so what this achieves is a very uh, articulate, very detailed, very wide sound. Um, so none of these mics are super expensive, so you can accomplish this uh, at home with fairly cheap mics that uh, still have good quality. Uh, like we've got two SM57s for our close mics, uh, which are a great workhorse for any guitar uh, recording. Um, and those are just close right to the cab. So uh, for the close mic on the Blues Deluxe, uh, I have an SM57. That's right, uh, right up against the cab. And what I do is I just get uh, right on the outside of the cab. Um, and then I just adjust it for, uh, to get a little more brightness, a little more darkness. Um, but generally it's right at the front, close to the cab. And that's gonna get me, um, the nice beef of the of the sound. Um, then I move out to this is actually a Samson uh, Q71 kick mic. So it's getting a lot of that low end, and it's getting a lot of that uh, upper high mids to highs that you would get from like the beater. And it's very punchy, very articulate. If I were to put this too close, it would break up very easily um, on a guitar uh, guitar amp. But back here, it just captures a lot of that punch, it captures a lot of that low end, and it, gets a, it complements the SM57 quite nicely. So then on our Risen, I, have this, I do the same thing with this SM57. I just get right along the cap, and then we'll go and we'll adjust it for, uh, for tone. Uh, then I have a small diaphragm pencil mic. Um, again, a very articulate mic a mic that's going to get you a lot of clarity and a lot of punch. Um, and that's a little bit further away again. And so that's just getting a little more of the, the dynamic of the amp versus just a very meaty, straight tone. And so it, they complement each other nicely and give you a lot more realism than if we just 
took two close mics, um, which a lot of modern recording is all about close mics, um, whereas far mics are going to get you more of a roomy sound, are going to get you more of a uh, old school style sound. And then lastly, talking about room mics, we have uh, Behringer V1. It's just a large diaphragm condenser microphone. Uh, it's basic as they come. It's nothing special about it, but it's just capturing the room tone. If you've got a decent sounding room, it's always good to get your room sound. Uh, you can just blend that into your desired value and it's going to sound good. Um, and then all together, we just mix some stereo. Uh, blues on the left, risen on the right, room right down the middle. Bring them all up until it sounds good. It's really simple. It's a lot more complicated than it looks, or it's a lot less complicated than it looks. <laughs> uh, you so, made it sound great. Yeah. Now that we've talked about the amp setup and the mics, let's have a listen to each. So when I had the idea to record this song, I wasn't exactly sure how to get the sounds I was hearing in my head onto the track. I knew that I didn't just want it to be a couple guitar amps and record. I wanted to have it be a real modernized, spacey, atmospheric sound. Um, I drew a bunch of inspiration from the Ghost Stories album by Coldplay and even some other artists such as San Holo and Tame Impala, and I just wanted a bunch of those synth and keys and real spacey sounds, so I basically just let Nick have free reign, um, and he programmed all that stuff, so yeah, Nick, let's go uh, take a look at what you were able to come up with. Yeah, it was fun. Let's uh, see what we did. So uh, this project was a lot of fun to work on because it's different than a lot of other stuff that I do. Um, I mean, number one, there's no metronome. Uh, and he wants it to be a modern sound, which to me, modern relies on a metronome. It relies on being on beat. It relies on you know a lot of the techniques I do with electronic music. It's quantized to the beat, um, and you're less playing music as you are writing out music a lot of times um, for my style of production. Um, so this was different. This forced me to you know be more of a musician um, in my approach to. Uh, making and producing the track, which was a lot of fun to me because I like making music. I like being a musician. Um, so, just start off. We just got that uh, raw guitar tone in. Um, my approach to anything is uh, track it good, and you don't have to worry about anything from that point on. Um, if you track it poorly, that's when you have to fix things. Um, but when we have good tracks like this, my goal is just to 
number one, don't screw it up. Uh, it's very easy just to go and, oh, this could be better, this could be better, and you just put a bunch of extra high noise, a bunch, a bunch of extra bass, and it's, figure out what does it actually need. So to me, all this really needed um, was a little compression to keep it um, more stable, get a little bit of, um, a little more punch, and a little bit of um, saturation just to give it a little more warmth. Um, and then, so by itself, that sounds good. So one of the things he talked about was he wanted a very ambient sound. So I have um, that room mic mixed in, getting the reverb off his amp. I have uh, reverbs going on it. So most of the reverb for his guitar, we took off the amp um, and out of the room because uh, he has a really nice reverb pedal. He's got the Strymon Big, so Big Sky and the Timeline, and it just sounds good. We've got the room mic, which is picking up a little bit of room noise. So I didn't need a whole lot of reverb. I took an early reflection uh, reverb, um, which is just the a very, very, very short reverb, basically, to summarize. And that's just to glue it together a little bit, make everything sound a little bit more like it's in one space. Um, and that's got a little bit of chorus on it. It gives it a little bit of shimmer. Um, and you can hear that, especially at the beginning, it's just the early reflection reverb with the chorus on it. You hear that little bit of shimmer in the background. And then I have automation going. As it goes, you get more of the straight guitar tone. So right there, that last chord there, duh, it's just the uh, guitar amp, no reverb, uh, or very little reverb, so it's very close in your face again. Um, and so that's all I really did to the guitar. I didn't do a whole lot of aggressive stuff to it, I just sort of uh, compressed it, I did a little EQ, and I sent it through um, a parallel saturator. So all that means is um, I sent it to a second track, similar to how you would do reverb, and I put a lot of saturation up and I just pulled it up behind it. I feel like that's a lot more subtle and a lot you can get a lot better result than just putting a saturator directly to the uh, track. All right, so after we got guitar tracked and I was sitting down with the song and I'm trying to figure out, okay, what what do I need to do with this? I figured, you know what, this song just needs some bass. Um, I was running through a lot of different ideas and I'm like, I'm just gonna take a bass, I'm just gonna play and we're gonna see what happens with it. And so the raw bass guitar sound is a very, very simple bass sound. If we... And you can hear it through most of the song. So it's just a very, a lot of low end, a little bit of high end saturation to it. Um, I think I'm using uh, stock quadrifuzz saturator on Cubase just to get a little bit of high-end um, bass saturation, but a very, very simple sound. Um, then I layered that in with a um, octave fuzz. So basically what this is, is I use Sound Toys Little Alter Boy. Um, and this is just a separate track. I can find up at the bottom where I used it. It's got a very nasally, very buzzy sound. Um, and that's just using a octave above with the format at nine to get more of a electrical sound out of it. I don't know how to describe it. And then a saturator to get it really saturated. And that's just coming in and out to give the bass a little bit more presence, a little bit more bit, uh, a little bit more bite. Um, and then I, another technique I did was after I've played the bass, um, you can convert the notes you've played to MIDI with Cubase. So I converted it all to MIDI and I sent it to a synth bass. So this synth, um, it's like a swell of low end which is the exact opposite of what a bass guitar does. You hit a bass guitar, 
all of the volume is at the beginning and then it fades, whereas this synth, the volume is at the end and it swells up. So together they sound really nice because the bass has that nice punch, you know where it's, you know it's there, and then that synth sort of just swells up and replaces it. Um, so that sounds like this together. Which I think sounds really nice and adds a lot to the atmosphere of it. Because if we just take just that with the guitar, it's already way more atmospheric than it was before, simply because we have that swelling pad behind us. So that's, that's our bass. It's very simple with just a couple of tricks to make it sound cool and unique. So the rest of the sound, besides the guitar and the bass, is just various pads that I brought in, um, different key stuff throughout the song. And again, that was just me uh, playing along to the lead sheet on a keyboard and then editing things, throwing it on different pads, trying out different sounds. So first thing we have is this uh, Mellotron intro. So what that is, is a Tortsatron Mellotron instrument from Plog. Uh, I just have it on the cello setting. Um, basically it's, it's emulating classic Mellotron, and then I have it uh, sent to reverb, very ambient, and um, I believe a high cut on it. And so that's just sort of giving a little bit of um, ambient intro. Nothing much to that one. Next up we have a piano sound. This is just a very basic piano sound I threw in. Um, I want to say this is the Shrine Piano. It's a free piano sample pack. There's nothing special about it, it's just piano. Then we have a swell pad. For, um, Basically, I just wanted something that sort of swells up behind the guitar uh, because the guitar is very got a lot of attack to it. I wanted something that sort of like follows up behind the guitar, fills up the space behind the notes he's playing. And so, when I'm writing music, I think a lot of musicians, uh, myself included, we tend to like try to make things complicated because it feels like we're doing more. Um, like a lot of people, well, we want to use all these really fancy chords and it's cool, it sounds cool, but a lot of times it's better to use those sparingly. So I have very simple triads and seventh chords um, for most of this, for most of this beginning part. It's just complicated sound at the beginning. Uh, it's just bass with some triads from the piano until this swell right here where I add in um, some tensions that are very different from the rest of the sound. And so I'm not just using a complicated chord because I, I want to sound smart. I'm using a complicated chord because we have this point of climax that uh, the tension really helps to uh, point out. And that sounds really nice on the pad because it's not going to fight with anything. Pads are very unobtrusive um, as long as you EQ them properly. Um, and after that big point of climax, I wanted to bring it back down and be simple again because this isn't supposed to be a super aggressive song. Um, so I have uh, just a single note line on um, the somatic setting on Ritualog 2. And so that's just, I just thought it sounded nice, I put one note down, uh, I think that's following along with the uh, bass mostly, I think it adds a harmony here or there. 
Um, and so that's just adding a little bit of ambience. And then that meets back up with, our, with that swell pad we had before. So the way I got that uh, delayed line sound, the little thing in the background that kind of delays back and forth, uh, it's just a very simple synth that just is very short. Sounds like this without any effects on it. Uh, it's just going straight down a scale. Um, and then you add, I added a lot of compression and saturation on it, and I added um, a widener just to make it sound nice and wide. Um, and then I added a delay to it, and it just had the delay ping pong just back and forth. So that's a really cool little effect you can add just by adding a staccato synth with a delay, basically, is all that there is to that. So then um, I added another pad behind this piano. Um, they're, again, very simple lines. I'm not going for something compl complicated. Uh, I'm letting Brendan's guitar playing be the star here, and this is just giving background noise. And so that's that's just a very simple um, pad that I've put into a OTT compressor. Uh, it's a multi-band compressor that's just very aggressive, great for electronic music. Um, and then this last part of the song is um, what I sort of feel as like the climax and the outro. Everything comes together. got a little bit of that old, we got a little bit of that new, which uh, is what we're going for. You have the synths, which are very spacey, very like uh, atmospheric. Then we have like that like classic flute sound that sounds like it'd be like an old 60s television. But also together it all has this very strangely spacey, strangely futuristic, but also like classic and old and retro sound which I think fits what the project was trying to do it's a um, you know classic jazz chart that we're taking into a, an atmospheric modern futuristic sound so um, that was that was kind of my my reasoning for why I wanted that like weird old style flute sound with the futuristic pads together and I think it works nicely so yeah that's the gist of it basically my whole approach to it was I want to capture a very simple sound um, that fills up the space. I'm not trying to step on um, the guitar. I'm trying to let the guitar be the star and just fill up an atmosphere in a space, which was really enjoyable to do. So that was kind of an explanation for how we came up with and actually captured the sounds for the song All the Things You Are. Um, I just want to give a big thanks to you, Nick, for producing it and mixing it and making it sound great and come Absolutely. Alive. Yeah, I had a great time doing it, so I'm always happy to work with Brendan. It's fun. It's, it's an awesome time, and All the Things You Are is available on all the streaming services, so go listen to that. We hope it inspires you. Um, thank you guys if you're still here for the video. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. It's a big help and I'm going to be posting more videos throughout the year. Um, I'll post links to all of Nick's social media as well, so make sure you follow him and you check out his stuff. Of my cat. See you next time and stay inspired.